I'm that petrifying to these billion dollar companies? <laughs> well, good, I hope I am. And I hope, and I hope everybody else becomes that. I mean, this is what they're afraid of. They're afraid of one voice, imagine. We all have joined a circus here, and in that circus there is going to be all sorts of inappropriate messages, inappropriate behavior, and some sort of downright sexual predatory aspects of it. My dog stepped on a bee. Lord! Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? That was a nice one, okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> you mean just, I mean arrested for disorderly conduct? Yeah. I'm transgender and I'm binary and I don't want to be searched by a man. I claim my Fourth Amendment rights. Uh, I find myself in New Zealand uh, playing the first female dwarf and immersing myself um, in the world of Middle Earth in, in, in such an extraordinary way. You have all these actors who have become famous playing these, these parts, characters, yeah, yeah. but they're not movie stars. Right. Captain America is the star. Right. Thor is the star. If the only gatekeepers to movie stardom came from Tarantino and Scorsese, I would never have had the opportunity to lead a $400 million plus movie. I'm in awe of their filmmaking genius. They are transcendent auteurs, but they don't get to point their nose at me or anyone. The evolution of the business has gone to, like there are no movie stars anymore. Mm. Like Anthony Mackie isn't a movie star. The Falcon is a movie star. If you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f*** off, OK? Very erotic.com. Remember all those Access Media articles telling you the thing that you clearly didn't like was a good thing. For instance, The Last Jedi has no respect for nostalgia, and that's a good thing. Disney killed the Star Wars Expanded Universe, why that's a good thing. The Eternals is not your typical Marvel movie, and that's a good thing. Andor doesn't feel like Star Wars, and that's a good thing. And who can forget my personal favorite, The Rings of Power is gonna upset Tolkien purists, and that's a good thing. Well, I've got one for you. Woke Hollywood is failing and that's a good thing. But how can you say that? The corporate shills have said woke Hollywood is doing just fine and you're just a teeny tiny vocal minority of bigots. Well, let's recap the year and you'll have to forgive me. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Award shows completely bombing, including the Oscars, which was only saved from being another record low by the slap heard around the world. Disney Star Wars accomplishing the inexplicable by breaking Disney Star Wars again with Obi-Wan. The beginnings of a woke Netflix culling following the failed Chappelle protests. We understand that jokes are jokes, things are things, but at the end of the day, what the hell is even that? A year of Disney Marvel diminishing returns in the theater and absolute MCU failures on Disney Plus. Couple that with all of those Disney flops, including one from Pixar. Sexism in gaming. The inevitable demise of G4 in under a year. Batgirl, a near completed film, canceled and erased from existence. Zaslav with his axe, firing all the big shots at formerly America's dumbest company, Warner Brothers, and then hiring James Gunn and bringing back Henry Cavill. The wokest of the woke, CW, selling for a bag of potato chips. Unfortunately, the company who bought them overpaid after they found out for every dollar the CW was spending, it was losing two. Everything burns. Then of course, there's The Woman King, a historical drama and a female empowerment story about slavers somehow managing to have a good opening on the worst box office weekend in 25 years. If you don't come see it, then you're sending a message that black women cannot lead the box office globally. Hey. 
that you are supporting that narrative. Bros, an LGBTQ plus rom-com, completely flopped after the star of the film called potential movie ticket buyers homophobes. Shocking turn of events. In another shocking turn of events, just recently the film She Said, which is a docudrama based on the investigation behind the Harvey Weinstein scandal completely failed. Honorable mentions Star Trek and Doctor Who, two franchises that are well into the apathy phase, trying to turn things around too little, too late. And one of the more surprising things of the year, no, not the Rings of Power being a complete disaster, the successful fan backlash that absolutely positively defeated a trillion dollar company. And the most recent thing, Disney firing their CEO in the middle of the night on a Sunday. The strategies that Bob's put in place are really, you know, long lasting in terms of where the company's going to go in the short term. Bob Iger has said already he is not coming back. So if you take him at his word, he is gone. You don't want another big media job. No, I worked, I worked for a big media company for almost 50 years. Yeah. I started when I was 23. Yeah. No. The company says with its parks and other operations shut down, it lost more than $1 billion last quarter alone. Save game. Save game. Today, dozens of Disney employees walked off the job. An act of protest over Florida's so-called don't say gay bill. Now we were opposed to the bill from the outset, but we chose not to take a public position on it because we thought we could be more effective working behind the scenes. Don't say he, she, ladies, gentlemen, you know, just very like, you know, basically we have to be in fear of what we say now. I want you to know that your words have made a real impact on me. I understand that we've made mistakes and the pain that those mistakes have caused. And I know that our silence wasn't just about the bill in Florida, but about every time an individual or institution that should have stood up for this community did not. Yeah. Beta! We're incredibly proud of how much our stories have been embraced by people around the world. The cost of keeping these subscribers, of coming up with blockbuster hits, of paying billions of dollars in programming costs to keep the fresh material coming that's going to attract people and keep them from turning this stuff off is enormous. Well, we had a great quarter overall. I mean, not only in streaming, but in our parks business as well. Healthy companies do not fire their CEO in the middle of the night at an Elton John concert and then replace him in a panic move with the architect of all their failures. As a wise person once said on Twitter, it's the roundest of times and find outest of times. Get woke, go broke. Or in the case of Twitter and Warner Brothers, get woke, get taken over. And lest we not forget Elon Musk's hostile takeover of Twitter and the meltdown has been glorious, particularly from woke Hollywood. So it has been a little over a week since Elon Musk took over Twitter and the place is, a, it's a mess. I went on Tesla, man. Right. Yeah, me too. He happened. Michelle Obama wouldn't have happened. And, uh, Elon Musk and, uh, Twitter. I don't Elon know. Musk right? This used to be Twitter. a town square. He's already called back some of the workforce. He fired a few days ago. He's putting his eight dollar charge for blue check verification on hold. First it was going to be twenty dollars. Now it's going to be eight dollars. He also suspended Kathy Griffin for impersonating him on a parody account. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off. Okay, fuckity bye. And none of this happens if you walk away, black pill, or stay silent. And things have gotten so bad, Hollywood, the access media, and the mainstream media have to acknowledge it, but of course, in their own way, without getting to the source of the problem and completely missing the point. Ideological blind spot or willful ignorance? Maybe they're the same thing. I'll let you decide. Now we're gonna get to an article that Chris Gore sent me about a month ago from the gray lady, the once respected but now ultimate garbage tier New York Times. After hashtag MeToo Reckoning, a fear Hollywood is regressing, the movement 
led to increased diversity representation in the entertainment industry. But now there is a worry that executives may have turned their attention elsewhere. You mean focus on things like being profitable as a company? Harvey Weinstein's second sex crimes trial began Monday in Los Angeles. She said about the journalistic investigation that took him down and helped ignite the hashtag MeToo movement, which ultimately failed, arrives in theaters on November 18th. Well, that already happened, and it completely failed. The Woman King opened to strong ticket sales last month on the worst box office weekend in 25 years, so I'm not sure how that happens, with Viola Davis saying she thought about the man who did very bad things to her, by the way, to power her visceral performance as the leader of the all-female group of African warriors that enslaved their own people. The convergence is a reminder of just how earth-shaking hashtag MeToo was for Hollywood. It was also opportunistic and a massive power grab, and that's why it ultimately failed. It helped touch off a broader reckoning in the entertainment industry around diversity, equity, and inclusion on both sides of the camera. Who gets to make the movies? Who gets to be subject of them? Activists say the studio and sets were permanently changed for the better. Mind you, activists said that. Zero tolerance for the workplace sexual bad things and discrimination is real. In recent months, however, Hollywood business culture has started to regress in subtle ways. Oh, it wasn't so subtle because Hollywood never stopped the discrimination. They just changed it. You can imagine as a lot of industries, but Hollywood particularly for so long, people hired people they knew. Mm -hmm. And that ended up often being people who looked like them. We must, in my view, always have the right to promote the best man for the job, regardless of sex. No. <laughs> New problems, widespread cost-cutting as the box office continues to struggle, coming union contract negotiations that producers worry will result in a filming shutdown, have become a higher priority. You mean making money, being profitable? Check out the big brain on bread. Smart mother, that's right. Fearing blowback, media companies that were vocal about hashtag Me Too and Black Lives Matter have been quieter on more recent political debates or cultural issues. It is my belief that some of the most useless people on the planet are DEI executives. So let's hear from some. Diversity, equity, and inclusion executives say that they are exhausted by an old boy network that is continuously trying to reconstitute itself. Women who were hired for big jobs and held up as triumphant examples of a new era have been pushed aside except for Jennifer Salky at Amazon and Kathleen Kennedy, both who should be, while some of the men who were sidelined by misconduct accusations are working again, probably because in some cases those were just unproven accusations. Are there pieces of crap in Hollywood? Certainly. Here's the problem trying to actually figure out who they are in a town filled with them. If asked to speak on the record about their continued dedication to change, Hollywood executives refuse or scramble in terror toward the we remain staunchly committed talking points written by publicists. Everything they say is practically written by publicists, but what they say privately is a different story. Some revert to sexist and racist language. Certainly, much of the fervor is gone. You know what happened? I'll give you three names. Asia Argento, Amber Heard, and Mrs. Jar Jar Abrams, Katie McGrath resigning from the Me Too Time's Up board of directors that I believe was ultimately used as a massive power grab. How do you guys make hiring decisions and who wins? Uh, Katie wins. <laughs> uh, no, I think that the, if I can just, yeah, because this is, uh, you know. Yeah. This article is based on interviews with more than two dozen industry leaders, including top studio executives, agents, activists, marketers, and producers who spoke on the condition of anonymity to candidly discuss the current state of the entertainment business. They varied in age, race, ethnicity, and gender. For three years, we hired nothing but women and people of color, said a senior film executive who, like many leaders in the industry, is a white male. He added that he did not think some of them were able to do the jobs they got. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you're telling me you're filling quotas in a highly specialized luxury creative industry and they aren't able to do the work they're inexperienced 
I'm shocked. In hushed conversations over lunch at Toscano Brentwood or cocktails at the San Vincent Bungalows, some powerful producers and agents have started to question the commercial viability of inclusion-minded films and shows. (laughs) I wonder what brought them to that conclusion. Maybe they talked to the CW executives. You know, we tried all that woke shit, but every time we made a dollar, we had to spend two. I think we're losing money. They point to terrible ticket sales for films like Bros, the first gay rom-com from a major studio, and Easter Sunday, a comedy positioned as a watershed moment for Filipino representation. Never heard of it, sorry. Miss Marvel, a critically adored D-plus series about a teenage Muslim superhero, was lightly viewed or not viewed at all, according to Nielsen's measurements. This brings us to the understatement of the year. There was an overcorrection, one studio head said. At another major studio, a top production executive pointed to the implosion of Time's Up, the anti-harassment organization founded by influential Hollywood women, including Katie McGrath, Miss Jar Jar Abrams, as a turning point. For a while, we all lived in complete fear, he said. That fear remains, but it has lessened. There is more room for gray and more benefit of the doubt and a bit of cringing about the rush to judgment that went on at the height of hashtag me too. And New York Times is presenting this as a bad thing. No, it is a good thing. Amazing progress has been made and it's not going away and it should not be discounted or overlooked, says Amy Baer, a producer, a former studio executive, and a board president at Women in Film, an advocacy organization. But there is fatigue. It is hard to maintain momentum, especially when there's so many opportunists ruining your movement. Within America, the land of opportunity, there is Hollywood, the land of opportunism. Entertainment companies are not backing off their tough sexual bad things policies that they have introduced in recent years. This is probably a good thing considering Hollywood, in part because board members are worried they will face shareholder lawsuits and maybe lawsuits from some other places. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences recently recommitted to its diversification campaign despite years of aggressive efforts to invite women and people of color to become members. The Academy is currently 66% male and 81% white. Well, hopefully you get there someday and do it before people stop watching the show, which could happen any day now. The moment is nonetheless unnerving, says Sarah Ann Massey, an actress who appears appears in She Said, which recently was the biggest flop of the year. Well, maybe until Strange Worlds came out. I'm not naive enough to think that a system that is unequal and oftentimes oppressive, pretending in Hollywood, by the way, that's what we're talking about. Yes, still very much so, is going to change overnight, Miss Ma said. At the same time, I find it incredibly frustrating. People at the top of the food chain in particular seem to have gotten distracted by new concerns like making money and having to deal with all the bullshit accusations of Me Too Time's Up and then having to deal with activists usurping what was probably a legitimate movement and now it's turned into full-blown DEI takeover. In August, Warner Brothers shelved Batgirl, a nearly finished movie starring a Latina actress featuring a transgender actor in a supporting role written by a woman, produced by a woman, and directed by two Muslim men. Warner Brothers Discovery never publicly explained its decision, but signaled that it found Batgirl to be creatively lacking. Dan Lin, a producer whose credits include Aladdin and the Lego movie, was among those who inferred something else. And he also openly admits something we've all known for a long, long time. It's no longer about optics, he said. A recession is coming. Budgets are tightening. And I'm really worried that diversity is going to be the first thing that goes. Not a surprise when you're green lighting projects, casting actors and casting directors and producers behind the scenes all for optics. Studios have started to take more risks with content. Are you sure about that? Backing scripts, for instance, that would have been radioactive in 2018. What do you mean, Top Gun Maverick, Spider-Man No Way Home? At the height of the hashtag Me Too, or in 2020, when BLM was at the forefront of the culture in the summer of love that Hollywood went hard in the paint for and people haven't forgotten. I have to be honest, if things had gone differently this past week in Minneapolis, 
I might have traded in my heels for marching boots. I know that a lot of you people at home want to reach for your remote when you feel like Hollywood is preaching to you. No shit. At the same time, some movies and shows that overtly showcase diversity and inclusion have either struggled in the marketplace or failed to get off the runway. The takeaway, at least for some agents and studio executives, the smart ones, we tried. These woke projects don't work. And the reason it doesn't work isn't because of diversity and inclusion, au contraire, it's the message that lacks either. And all of this was inevitable. To the stands and corporate shills who have been telling us Disney and Hollywood are doing just fine. To all the others who have been saying, your voice doesn't matter and it's all a waste of time. Just a reminder, Disney lost 1.5 billion on its streaming in one quarter and now Bob Chapik is being accused of cooking the books again and one more time because this is never going to get old. Disney fired their CEO in the middle of the night on a Sunday and I know they replaced him with the same idiot who got us here but it was the action itself to state the obvious because that's what I have to do here on YouTube. These are not the actions of a healthy organization. Is Hollywood gonna change? Time will tell. It certainly looks like a couple of organizations are at least trying, but others still need to hit bottom, but they're well on their way. Maybe Hollywood shouldn't have prioritized identity politics over profit. Maybe they shouldn't have told half of their audience to f off. Maybe they should have actually competed instead of colluded, which is a bad thing. That's why woke Hollywood failing is a good thing. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com. Please subscribe.